there is something happening here which is a divorce from reality in terms of the fundamentals of the company, of the business. In fact, yesterday, Adam, Adam Aaron and AMC said that effectively when they sold their shares to the public, by the way, who've, who've given them now potentially a new lease on life, we'll see, in terms of the cash that they're raising. But for the company, it's not a game, right? It's not a, a casino vacation or a speculation. It, it's a business with employees. And so how do you think about that piece of this? You know, I think Adam Aaron and I get a lot of uh, I get a lot of flack for this. I, I get called the 23 year old naive kid for, for trusting what the CEO does. And I'll take that heat every single time because I believe in history, trends and facts. And the facts are that Adam Aaron is setting the bar in terms of CEOs, you know, reaching out to retail investors and caring about what the retail investor is asking for, what they're looking for, what they care about, as well as watching out for the long term health of the company. They've raised well over a billion dollars in 2021 alone, which is really going to help set them up for the next one, two, five, ten years. They can acquire different family movie theater chains who did not survive COVID, who did not survive the quarantine process, who might never open their, their theaters again, right, and, and really do some great long-term success. Now, with this short-term, uh, you know, momentum trading, there inevitably will be people that don't invest in AMC long term. But I think there are going to be lots of people who do invest in AMC long term, myself being one of them, because I truly do believe there is a, a long term fundamental uh, you know, value for AMC. Is that right now? I don't think so. I mean, I think that most of the retail investors of the apes understand that this is not the true fundamental value of AMC. And that's where the risk comes into so, play. Right. So Trey, what do you think the real value of AMC? You know, what do you think the real value of AMC is? And you look at, at some of their competitors that are also publicly traded companies. You could look at the bonds, uh, which, you know, which, which are trading at a, a, a pretty steep discount. Right. So the, the market cap for AMC, if I remember correctly, was just over $10 billion not too long ago. And you look at companies like Cinemark, which were trading at about $1 billion. Now, I, I think that you, you look a couple quarters down the road. We, we get more quarantine restrictions to be lifted and, uh, you know, the, the revenue starts rolling back in for AMC. You've got two things that are going to start happening. You've got a lot of these hot movies that are coming out, which are going to roll in some great revenue. And you've got a new factor that can't really be accounted for and quantified which is social and cultural sentiment towards the company itself. There are people that genuinely love AMC stock simply for, you know, the culture that it's built, the people that have come together for, you know, some sort of, you know, love for the theater and, and the money that's made people. I think there's going to be gratification towards the company that's ultimately going to help them make money. With all that being said, I, I truly do believe that the fundamental value of AMC would be somewhere in that 20 to $25 range, you know, in 2021, end of 2021, when they're fully back in capacity, fully bringing in that that uh, that cash flow and, and that sort of nature. But that's half of where it is today. Right. So what do you what do you tell your what do you, if, if you're saying that the value of it's half of what it is today, what do you tell your followers who are buying it today who eventually at some point now, it's going to go down? Right. Fundamental value is different than momentum trading right now, just because. So this is this is a fact. The market is the, the stock market tells you exactly what every single security in the market is worth in that given moment. So at this given moment, if there's somebody out there that's willing to buy AMC stock, it's trading at $47 right now. Somebody's willing to buy AMC right. stock at $47. That means at that moment, it's worth $47 to somebody. You know, the, the momentum trading aspect of it, even if it doesn't necessarily reflect on their current earnings or their future projected earnings, that doesn't mean that there's not money to be made. In fact, I know there's a lot of people who have made money out there. I've read some of the stories. I've read of the people right. who become millionaires off of AMC stock. You can take advantage of momentum trading. In fact, I think right. this is a new uh, Trey, age of I investing. But am I, I, I think the question I'm asking is, am I supposed to be concerned that, I mean, people have talked about these types of things over the years as, as pump and dump schemes where people talk up a stock, right? And there are some people who are very educated. Trey, you, you, you seem to know a lot about what's going on. And by the way, there's a lot of people online trading this right now that do understand and understand all of the dynamics. But then there seems to be a lot of people who don't. And, and by the way, uh, people make mistakes along the way. Uh, yesterday, I, I, I noticed you had said at one point that you thought when, they, when AMC first put out that announcement about the 11.5 million shares, you know, you, you would put out a tweet telling everybody, no, 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 that, that's actually old news. It's from a different, different, uh, uh, it's from, from an old filing. And, and that, that proved to be wrong. And so I just, I ask you that because I think that there are people who are listening to you in, in terms of how you think about your own responsibility to all of the other apes. Right. And I appreciate you holding me responsible, Andrew. That's 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 totally OK. And I, I hold that weight very, very heavily and in, in being careful about the things that I say and put out online. You know, now 
the, the big message that I've always preached and tried to live by over the last six months, and I think what really takes any sort of risk and overexposure to AMC stock off the table is only investing into it what you're willing to lose. You know, especially call options. This has been something I've talked about with the call options chain over the last, you know, it's probably three months, is view these call options, you know, buying a $70, $80, $100, $110 call, essentially as a decent odds lottery ticket. That's what those are, right? Because we can't predict the volatility either up or down in either direction for AMC stock. But I'd say it's a better a better odds lottery ticket than you've got doing something else. And I'm never going to pretend that's not what it is, right? Because that right. is what call options are. You're betting that a stock is going up, puts are betting you're go it's going down, you know? Um, so as long as you are really limiting your exposure and, and managing your risk, managing your exposure to the stock, and you're not putting yourself in a situation where you can't pay your bills, that you can't take care of your family, right. you can't feed your mouth, right? Uh, I think right. that you're sitting okay. And okay. The, the fundamental value, I, I won't argue that in the least bit, the fundamental value of AMC stock is not where it's trading right now. But it will okay. come back down to that eventually when the squeeze is all said and done. Right. But the storyline has not been written yet. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.